Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we're talking about the queen of credit printing herself, the Missouri. Now, the Missouri isn't currently available in the Armory or in the Premium Shop to purchase, but there's a very good chance that in a little over a month's time, she will be coming back out for sale for the July 4th event. It is worth noting that all new Missouris will not have the insane credit printing ability of the old Missouri, but they will have the normal premium economy of a tier 9 ship, and of course with the camouflage and camo bonus rework coming out during the summer, who knows what's going to happen with that. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the Missouri. You might also be thinking, well, Sealord, why are you talking about a ship that's not currently for sale and is nowhere near her old self in terms of her economic boost? Well, one, I had a really good game in her, which you'll be watching in the background right now. And two, I really like the Missouri and always wanted to do a video that kind of dove into her history a little bit more rather than just talking about the ship herself, which we'll go ahead and do now. So the following is a very brief summary of the Missouri's history. The ship served from the 40s all the way through to the 1990s, saw a lot of action, served in several major conflicts, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Missouri's kill was laid down at the Brooklyn Navy Yard in Slipway 1 on January 6, 1941. Three years later, she was launched on January 29, 1944. She was quickly fitted out and commissioned on June 11th of the same year. She spent her early years in the war acting as an anti-aircraft screen for U.S. carriers and as an oiler for destroyers. She would later go on to participate in the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa, and later shell the Japanese home islands. After the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Empire of Japan surrendered to the United States, with Missouri hosting the surrender ceremony on September 2, 1945. Five years later, Missouri served in the Korean War, providing naval gunfire support for the Incheon landings by bombarding the city of Samchuk in an attempt to divert attention away from Incheon. She provided support for the UN operation throughout the rest of the war. Just before her inactivation, her and her four sisters sailed together for the first and only time during a training cruise. She was then decommissioned on February 26, 1955. She was then later recommissioned under the Reagan administration plan to build a 600-ship navy to counteract the Soviet Navy. She was towed out of mothball and modernized at the Long Beach Naval Yard in 1984. Her 20mm Orlikens and 40mm Bofors were removed along with 10 of her 5-inch guns. She was fitted with launchers for the Harpoon anti-ship missile and the Tomahawk cruise missile and fitted with Phalanx close-in weapon system rotary cannons for defense against missiles and aircraft. She would also receive modern radar and communication equipment. She would go on to serve during the Cold War and later serve during the Gulf War, firing her first Tomahawk missiles on January 17, 1991 around 1 o'clock in the morning. She fired her 16-inch guns in combat for the first time since the Korean War on January 29th. By the end of the war, Missouri had fired 783 16-inch shells at Iraqi positions. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, Missouri was decommissioned for the final time on March 31, 1992. On May 4, 1998, Missouri was donated to the USS Missouri Memorial Association of Honolulu, Hawaii. She was then docked at Fort Island on June 22, where she stands guard over the Arizona today as a museum ship. With the Missouri's exceptionally long service life and going through several major global conflicts, it's no wonder that the Missouri was selected to be the first ever Tier 9 premium ship in World of Warships. However, she wasn't released outright for cash or doubloons. Rather, she was also the first free XP ship for a staggering cost of 750,000 free XP. You can see why free XP ships got jumped up to the neighborhood of a million free XP, and then two million free XP, and now why we don't have any free XP ships anymore, because free XP isn't really a difficult resource to come by at the moment. But anyway, so for most of the Missouri's characteristics, they're exactly the same as her sister, the Tier 9 Techline American battleship, Iowa. There are a couple of key differences between the two, however. First off, the Missouri gets 
radar rather than the catapult spotter or fighter consumable. She, her, her radar goes out to 9.5 kilometers, lasts for, depending upon how you build the, the ship, for around 35 to 32 seconds. Uh, again, you can add on commander skills, flags, and modules to get that out even longer, but that's up to you. And she also has slightly different armor. She has some slightly thicker internal armor. Doesn't really make up too much of a difference, especially with all the large caliber battleship guns we have at tier 9 and above now. And she also does not get the improved American battleship heel. The Missouri gets the original American battleship heel. It was, again, quite some time ago. I've talked about this a couple of times beforehand. The American battleships from tier 8 on up got a very similar heel to what the Colorado got, which is an improved heel. It's not a super heel. It won't print back half of the ship if you get citadeled, but it does print back more than what the Missouri's heel does. So in most cases, and well, not in most cases, in a dumbing down of comparison between the Missouri and the Iowa, you could essentially say that the Missouri is a slightly worse Iowa because of the heel, but it does have radar. And that's what you would be buying today if the Missouri went on sale, let's say, tomorrow or for the 4th of July, whenever she does come back on sale. That is essentially what you are buying. Now, does that hinder the ship from performing well in today's World of Warships? Well, not necessarily. The old American Battleship heel isn't garbage or anything. It's just not as good as the new American Battleship heel. And she still has the main battery guns of the Iowa, which you have been seeing on, well, performing very, very well in the background during the uh, opening portions of the video. And you'll see them continue to perform quite well during the rest of this video. So the Iowa and the Missouri get the American 406 millimeter 50 caliber guns. Now the 50 caliber refers to the length of the barrel. The North Carolina has a 45 caliber bar barrel as does the Kearsarge, the tier nine premium American hybrid battleship monstrosity. If you've played the Kearsarge or the North Carolina, you know that their shells are very, very slow. They come out the tubes at, I believe, 701 meters a second, which is exceptionally slow for battleship shells, especially with some of the uh, crazier ships that we're getting at higher tier now, like the Soviet battleships and then like the Italians, whose AP shells are coming out of the tubes around 800 and sometimes even closer to 900 meters a second. So these are, these are some slow shells on the North Carolina Kearsarge. And the Missouri, and by extension the Iowa, they do also have fairly slow shells, but because the barrel is longer, they're slightly faster, coming in around 748 meters a second, which means aiming at longer ranges is slightly easier than with the North Carolina and the Kearsarge. Now, the reason these shells are so slow is because these are the American Super Heavy AP shells. Now, these were developed in World War II as, well, what they sound like. They're super heavy AP shells. They're heavier armor-piercing shells, which means that the shells carry more force. And in testing, apparently, the Missouri and the Iowas had a very similar AP performance to the Yamato-class battleships. You can argue about that all you want in the comments section, but that's what we have in terms of historical documents, in terms of testing, and I've seen the forum post about that and the pages and pages of arguments, and I'm sure that might happen in the comments as well, but hey, that's what the Navy claims. So, in Wood Warships, that means that these shells pack one hell of a punch, and again, you guys should have seen me clap a room pretty hard at the beginning of the match and again you're going to see that go on performance as well later on this match too now again they are 16 inch guns at tier 9 they're not the largest caliber by any stretch of the imagination but they're still 16 inch guns and she's also able to equip the special american oh and watch this right here the akatsuki 8,000 damage right off of him with ap that dispersion right there was very, very nice, and that's thanks to what I was about to mention, the Special American Battleship Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2 module, which is fitted at the end of the module slots. It is a unique American Battleship module, no one else can fit it, 
it extends the range of the main battery guns and decreases the dispersion of the main battery guns by 11%, which makes the American battleships one of the most consistent battleships in terms of their gun performance in the game. When you fit that module, you can do stuff like this too. <laughs> Chunk of Zara for 29,000 damage. The Iowa and the Missouri and the American battleships, high tier battleships with this module equipped are wonderful at dealing with cruisers that slip up and show you broadside. If you can catch them in a turn when they're stuck broadside onto you, or if you can catch them unaware, you are going to at least get, if not a Citadel, probably easily 15k damage to them. Now don't get me wrong, Orange Jesus can still screw you over and make your shells fly all over the place, but this module really helps you rein it in. And not to mention, too, the Iowa and the Missouri are some pretty darn fast ships. You can get these ships up to, I think, north of 33 knots if you have the speed flag equipped, and, and that's very useful in a situation like when I'm in right here. I made a mistake, I showed my broadside, I got a pretty good beatdown, but I'm able to run away and then disengage and get that island right there that I hid behind and ran away from the Kansas and Izumo from in between me and them and I'm able to fall back here pop my heel and survive and continue the engagement now if you pay attention to this match too my team and I'm in a division with uh, fellow clan members Morgan and Dragon Morgan's in the Johan de Witt and Dragon is in the Jean Barbie and we are currently well, stuck on this side of the map because our team doesn't really want to push, it seems like. Our team is very content to just go to A and hold A, and you can tell we're paying for that by being, well, we are only have one DD left and Meat has three DDs left, Don't here comes the radar. Very useful tool to have when a DD thinks he can slip away, but nope, you can pop that. You can pop your speed boost all you want there. Uh, Terigo, I think is how you say that. and. Again, thanks to the dispersion module, we were able to clip him there with a couple of shells and deal with him. So, we're down all of our DDs except for one. Uh, two cruisers and a battleship and our submarine. Enemy team still has two DDs, one cruiser, and four battleships left alive. And they're now approaching 300, almost 400 points ahead of us in terms of the points game here. So, I'm in the Missouri, which again is... In some cases, some would consider it a worse Iowa with a radar, and now we have some work to do. I'm at 97,000 damage. We pick up Strike Team here, but I do have Halsey on my ship, which gives me this boost right here when I get Confederate. Uh, it says, I think, hit hard, hit fast uh, bonus, where it decreases the reload time of your main battery guns by, I believe, 20 or 25%. But with Adrenaline Rush, which I also have on my Missouri, I now have, on these sweet 16-inch guns, a 20-second reload time. Now, here's a good trick for you, too, in, in avoiding torpedoes. Good hit there on the Kansas, too. If you have torpedoes approaching you like this, or in any case, you need to slow down, back your throttle all the way back, and cram your rudder into the turn into the direction of the torpedoes with a ship like iowa or missouri because they're so long oh and there we go picked up the uh kansas there and that got us the general offensive award they bleed a lot of speed when they turn any long ship does it's like the uh the soviet battleships or of course the germans as well you turn it helps you slow down a little bit more it's kind of like an additional break and that has saved my tail more than a few times in this game Shejong here, tier 9 pan-Asian light cruiser, uh, gets citadeled out of existence. Again, wonderful AP for dealing with cruisers. What really helps it too is that slow velocity we were talking about earlier. These shells don't overpin cruisers near as much as other battleship shells. Am I saying they never overpin? No, I'm just saying they overpin less. Marlboro broadside onto me from 15 kilometers away. This is a tier 9 dockyard ship that was available, I believe, in the previous dockyard. And there goes 43,065 hit points of his health. A double citadel there. That's why that would have been my fourth kill of the game. But the rune managed to sneak that last shell in there before uh, I could reload my guns and get another salvo going off on him. And just like that, we've managed to turn this game around from us being down. I think they had a three ship advantage on us. They were ahead of us by almost 400 points. So now where we have a three ship advantage on just this one lone Le Fantastique here at the end. So what happened, there was some good coordination, some good focusing fire, 
happening from uh, what's left, what was left of our team. We managed to just target the enemies down and somehow managed to pull this back from what, when uh, myself, Morgan, and Dragon were playing, we were sure, we were like, oh man, look at this. Our team's stuck at A, we gotta try and get out of A now. And then I made that turn earlier and I got, you know, what, 70% of my health cleaved off, off of my ship. Um, I'm like, oh man, we're, we're just gonna wind up losing this here. But luckily the team got it together. We were able to pull out of, of that of, of that assured loss there and turn it around here at the end and uh, As you can see here too despite the lay fantastic being only about 12 13 ish kilometers away You can see I'm trying to estimate my lead The shells are still quite slow for battleship shells It's not uncommon that you'll fire these sh these guns and then a battleship That's maybe like five kilometers behind you fires their guns and you can see their shells overtake your shells to the target but Like you guys have seen these shells do connect they connect hard and with this lay fantastic going down here from Dragon's main battery guns on the Jean bar that is game for us, and we do pick up the Division Kraken here at the end. Ooh, those shells almost, almost clipped his stern. That, that would have been my fourth kill there. But anyway, we do pick up the Division Kraken here at the end of the match, and I haven't mentioned this since the beginning, but the economy on the original Missouri is a little busted when wargaming was trying to figure out what a tier 9 premiums economy would be like they kind of overtuned it to where with a performance like this a 2300 base xp game with three kills and really not too much else being done you know that there was no i didn't cap anything i didn't get a bunch of defense ribbons i didn't shoot down a bunch of planes to kind of pad the xp or anything but with this performance here here which is a pretty darn good performance but nothing like mind-blowing I had this in terms of rewards. Now this is with the full special signal flags, all the economic flags, 1.9 million credits, almost 2 million credits here in the Missouri. And of course those XP and uh, free XP gains again are attributed to the stack of special signal flags I had on the Missouri during this as well. So you can see why Wargaming quickly removed the, the Missouri and change the tier 9 premiums economy forever now i didn't mention her economy very much during the gameplay portion because i just want to talk about how the ship performs and can she perform when she's essentially a, again a worse iowa yes she still can perform well is she still a premium worth buying well we also dedicated about what a, a quarter of this video talking about the ship's history if you really like that you like the ship's history you want to have that historical ship in game as you can see here, it's still very possible for the ship to perform well and even make a big part in having a comeback match. So it's still a, a ship I think is very much worth buying if you're in for the history. If you just want a tier 9 premium that can print money, there's much better ships out there for you today. Because again, while the guns on the Missouri are good, you got the radar, um, she's a very maneuverable, very fast battleship. There still are ships which just honestly or more meta today that you can get that will perform better for you so guys let me know if you like this type of video where we talk about the ship's history a little bit more um i try to keep it under five minutes because i'm not exactly sure how much of you guys would be into that i know some of you will be like yeah go make, make a whole 40 minute video talking about the missouri's history or whatever ship's history and that would be something I, I would maybe potentially do later on but i just want to try something a little bit different and see how that goes over with you guys today but if you enjoyed that make sure to let me know in the comments down below Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on to 40,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.